The College Football Experience, Colorado State Rams 2023 season preview episode on the Sports Gambling Podcast Networks brought to you by Bird Dog Shorts. Dominate the summer with an amazing pair of shorts and a free Yeti style tumbler when you order over at birddogs.com slash pool. Once again, that's birddogs.com slash pool. Hey, everybody, Jim McMahon here, and you're listening to SGPN. Let it ride. Yes, yes, yes. Woo! Welcome. Welcome to the college football experience. Colorado State Rams 2023 season preview. I'm excited to talk CSU. And I know some people will say, Colby, you're a Buffs fan. How can you root for CSU? They're the <laughs> rival. They're the rival. But I dig them. I've always digged them. Their, their helmet, their stadiums. Like, I. I both of the old and the new I've enjoyed. So look, I'll explain more about it later. Perhaps you're wondering just who the hell you're listening to. And uh, well, my name is Colby Swig at database Dan, AKA pick Don D that's not a pick. This is a pick. He was raised in the land down under where a man thinks on his feet, speaks with his fists and lives by his wits. When Dundee happened, he was a superstar. I'm probably drinking too much and celebrating too much and not sleeping. I would have killed a normal man, but nah, no, that's gone. The medical advice I got from that was, was like being hit by lightning. Pretend it never happened and get on with your life. Mm. Pretend it never happened and get along. Oh, look, I'm, I'm probably celebrating too much. That might be my <laughs> guest. That might be my guest after, uh, you know, some recent partying videos that I I saw uh, via, via the interwebs, as George W. said. Uh Honored to have this guy on the show. And look, uh, for, you know, last time I saw this guy, we were probably uh, multiple cocktails deep uh, in a theater in Las Vegas watching uh, like 35 hours of basketball nonstop. During <laughs> yep. March Madness. Give it up for founder of Capwise, uh, which you should be following on Twitter at Capwise. Ben Carey, how you doing, brother? Man, I'm doing great. I I'm pumped to be on today to talk some college football. It's the dog days of summer right now. Uh, I've been betting a lot of MLB, and it's it's gotten to that point. I, I made it almost to July, but my focus is now on college football, so I'm pumped. Yeah, the summer uh, over here at Sports Killer Podcast, you know, we, we we got God's eye. We got a bunch of TVs, man, and it's always questionable when I come into work, what is on the tele? Like, we, might, <laughs> we, we have some, like, some services where I feel like I don't know how we get like a badminton game in like India or something, but it's all in the summer. It gets a little, gets a little questionable. And I'm like, no one's actually got money on this right now, <laughs> but, uh, oh, yeah. but dude, honored to have you on the show, man. And uh, excited to talk Colorado state Ram football with you, man. And uh, look, Jay Norvell, I played that Jim McMahon introduction. They're former teammates with the Chicago bears back in the day. Good point. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, it, I didn't do that. Uh, that was not on purpose. That was like, I figured that out. That's as a great the segue to talking about some Ram football. I'll tell you what. And before we begin, I'm I'm with you. So I grew up a Buffs fan. But the thing with CSU, like I can tolerate them to some regard. It's the the Huskers where I'm sure you're the same where it's just like, that's the, yeah. that's the more hateful rivalry right yeah. there. But CSU, you know, if they make a bowl game, I'll cheer for them. Um, you know, I, I like to see them have upsets against, you know, some of the bigger teams they go against. But uh, yeah, when they play each other, of course, they do this year again. Uh, that's different. But no, they're, they're a fun team to watch. And I'm excited to talk about them with Jay Norvell entering his uh, second season here. Yeah, exactly. And that's the way. I look, when they play Colorado uh, throughout my childhood, going back to the early 90s, I hated Colorado State for that game. But then when I see Sonny Lubick or whoever, you know, uh, yeah. Mike Bobo taking on, I'm like, no, I, I kind of like their program. Now, no, Nebraska, no, they Nebraska went to lose every time they ever. Played. But what about Bradley Bradley Van Pelt though? I mean, that's true. That was a different story. Yeah, yeah, that was <laughs> like be the most hated Rams yeah. from like the yeah. bus perspective, right? <laughs> definitely, 
Definitely, man. Uh, easily clear uh, public enemy number one, I think, for Bus fans. But then he uh, became a Bronco player for a short period of time, which was funny because I'm a Broncos fan. But the the spike off the head. But you you know what yeah. I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about, man. And uh, yeah, he's he doesn't he's not he's he's there's only a few p- people that are not allowed on this show. He might be one of them. <laughs> he's one I, of them. I gotta yeah. double check. Yeah. Uh, but but yeah, man. Jay Norvell, year one, three and nine now. Uh, my brother, who who is a co-host of this show, he's not on this episode, obviously, but uh, you know, he was one of his locks was Colorado State over, I think, five wins a season ago. That did not Ooh, come. Through. Yeah, that was that was tough. <laughs> and and well, I think, I think part of it was because I saw all those players from Nevada come over, and I mm-hmm. I I did take the over. I just didn't lock it up. Yeah. Um, so I thought there would be more continuity based off of that. Like based off of bringing, I forget the number off the top of my head from two years ago. It was it was a like, it was a lot of players because the new head coach at Nevada was pissed about it, right? Like he was yeah. like, "This yeah, is how you're going to run things. You're you're going to take the whole team." But I mean, that's new age college football. Um, it is. And, and I was on the fence too. I I was like, you know what? He's bringing a lot of his guys, but five and a half was steep. I think I leaned under. It was one that I didn't like either way. I was just very questionable on either side but yeah it was a weird season last year for them yeah and and that's why you follow that's why you follow ben carry all right he knows a thing or two about a thing or two give cap wise a follow on yes Twitter. sir uh but look you look back at what he did in year one at nevada in reno he was three and nine well year one in fort collins he was three and nine he made a five game jump in year two perhaps he can do the same i got the dogs are barking i think we should already take <laughs> on the over hey, my um, dogs are ready for football too man they're pumped so i <laughs> uh, gotta love it man but no i think you know that he had a five game jump back when yes. he was in, you know from one to two from year one to two and i'm curious if if that can happen again uh what's your what's your take though on him as a head coach before we uh we break down you know the portal the offense the defense yeah i mean he came into a somewhat of a tough situation um Adesio or Adesio out of uh, Boston College coming in, that was a bad hire. It it didn't gel what he was trying to build in Fort Collins. It it just was a it was a forced effort. And I think it came down to his last season. Uh, I think it was the second to last game. There's a tradition at Colorado State where they uh, play the the, or the band plays a song. The whole team comes out win or lose. Right. And one of those games, he didn't do it. They went straight to the locker room. And all hell broke loose in that program. I'm, I'm close to a lot of people in that program. And, you know, that was the straw that broke the camel's back. Of course, he was fired. Norvell comes in. Um, it was it was a tough position, right? Because Colorado State has gr- a great stadium. Um, they tore down Hughes. They have Canvas Stadium. They have good facilities. They just have not been able to really build uh, a good program since the new stadium. And I think they're in a position where with his guys coming back, I'm optimistic, cautiously, but I'm optimistic that this Rams team can exceed ex- expectations this year. Yeah, you know, I, I, I kind of into. I think this might be the their best hire in some time. Now I know it's hard to say that when you go three and nine, <laughs> when you go three and nine, and you lose to a uh, FCS team, you know, uh, I, by thirty one. <laughs> like, and, and, and I'm a big, I'm a big Sky guy. I played at Northern Colorado, so I, I follow the Big Sky. I liked Sacramento State to cover in that spot, but no way. I thought they were going to win by 31 points on the road. I mean, that, that's insane. Yeah, yeah. I, I took Sac State <laughs> in that game, too. But I was not <laughs> expecting domination like that. Um, and uh, But you look later in the year, you know, when they beat Nevada in that crazy game. That was a crazy game against Ken Wilson. And yes. There's a little rivalry there. They ended up beating – they had, like, three straight games. So they beat Nevada at, in Reno. Mm-hmm. Then – then the following week, they almost knock off uh, Utah State. Yeah, close um, one by four. Yep. Yeah. And then and then the Hawaii game, they win by four. So for like three weeks, I was buying into it, being like, "Hey, they got something going." <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, Boise and then San Jose State came, <laughs> but maybe win some of those close games year two, and we could be talking about the over here. Um, I don't know. We're gonna get to it all, but folks, before we get to it, I want to tell you that the college football experience, Colorado State Rams 2023 season previews brought to you by Bird Dogs. Yes, Bird Dogs make you look good. 
All right, bird dogs are stretch khaki shorts, and they're designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and the leg, giving you a truly sculpted look. You're going to put the bird dogs on, and you're going to look like you're going to look like uh, Schwarzenegger in, in uh, Terminator 2 or something. You know what I mean? Something wild. Maybe maybe Stallone and Tango and Cash. I just feel like you put the bird dogs on, and all of a sudden people are interested in you, and you're, you're, you're just uh, you're looking better, right? They fit way better than regular shorts. And the regular shorts are made of stiff, restricting cotton. You know, Bird Dog fixed that issue years ago by inventing cloud knit fabric. Yes, cloud knit fabric. It looks just like khakis, but stretches. So, you know, so you get that way slimmer fit look uh, without having to sacrifice all that movement. Bird Dogs. Also, this is fantastic. I got some Bird Dogs, by the way. Oh, there we go. Hell See, yeah, man. Like yeah. Shit. And, and you, and you like, ditch right? the cargoes, get the bird dogs. That's, that's what I tell people. 100%. And I love this here. It's like if we're talking, if Colorado State fans and, and, and students are listening to this, look, we were all in college once. Sometimes you end up going out, having a great time. Maybe you don't make it home that night, <laughs> right? Maybe, maybe you didn't get a chance to shower in the morning. You're in class sitting next to old beautiful uh, Rebecca that you've uh, had a crush on for, for a bit. <laughs> Well, look, Bird Dogs uses anti-stink sweat wicking fabric. I repeat, anti-stink sweat wicking fabric. All right. That is amazing right there. They need to be involved with the space program as far as I'm concerned. It keeps you cool and dry all day long and smelling all right. So get yourself some Bird Dogs. Go to birddogs.com slash pool and and enter the promo code pool. And they're just going to throw in a Yeti style tumbler with your order. Free Tumblr? Come on. This is Thunder and Lightning. I'm, I'm a Tumblr guy, man. Yeah. I got My one. wife loves them. Yeah, I use them all the time. So uh, check them out. The birddogs.com slash pool for a free Yeti style Tumblr. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We can promise you that. All right. We are back on the college football experience. Hopefully you're watching on YouTube. YouTube.com slash the college experience. Uh, also available wherever you listen to podcasts at. Uh, we are talking Colorado State Ram football with Ben Carey, the founder of Capwise. Uh, and Ben, uh, let's talk about, well, it's on, it's college football 2023. The, if you're not Army, Navy, or Air Force, <laughs> the, the rattling off the transfer portal, like, I, I've been doing this uh, doing this show a long time. We've been previewing like these teams for for over five years, and I can remember five years ago you you'd have a couple teams with like six, eight, and you'd be like, Max, oh, yeah, yeah, I gotta and I gotta make that a point of emphasis. Never did I foresee that like every single team's gonna have like if you were to count up the total leaving and incoming, you'd probably have your own football team. Oh, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> so. So leaving uh, for uh, leaving out of Fort Collins is running back da- David Bailey. He follows Steve Adazio. He had so much great success at Colorado State. He said, "You know what? Let me follow my head coach." I'm joking. Texas A&M probably just had a shit ton of money. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the way I just naturally think about these things now. I mean, yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, wide receiver Demir Abdullah hit the portal. Hasn't landed anywhere. Wide receiver Kai O'Day Jr. hit the portal. Hasn't landed anywhere. Quarterback or cornerback, not quarterback. Uh, DeAndre Greeley landed with the Buffalo Bulls. Uh, offensive lineman Owen Snively is at EMU Eastern Michigan at the factory now. Linebacker Tavian Brown heads out to Atlanta to Georgia State. Offensive lineman George Mike Hahn uh, is in the portal. Wide receiver Ty McCullough goes to Montana State, the Bobcats. We were talking mm. about this guy football. This guy was good. I remember you watching. Were, dude, guy. Pe- people yeah. want to go play up in uh, Montana, Montana State, man. It's, it's big yeah. time football up there, man. That is a big get for for the Bobcats there in Bozeman. Uh, they also lost uh, athlete Garrick Robinson to Nevada. He goes to Nevada. I like this. This rivalry is getting good. Uh, running backs, uh, Alex Barat, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. I am not sure. If not, I apologize. Uh, tight end Drake Martinez is also in the portal. Tight end Tanner Arkin headed, headed out to Brett Bielma in the Fighting Illini. Off at the tackle, Chess Jackson to the Ohio Bobcats. Running back, Ajon Vivens. You know, this guy wasn't that bad. I remember watching this guy. He's in the portal. I don't know where he's landing. But defensive uh, lineman Devin Phillips is at Kansas now. There's a chance he could start there in Lawrence. Wide receiver Malcon Stovall is at Arizona State. He might be getting solid reps there in Tempe. But he was interesting. He came over from Nevada where he had – I remember playing him at DFS in Nevada a lot. And I don't know what happened last year. They were struggling the first three weeks. He just quit the team. Before, before before it ruined the year of eligibility, it was like, I'm out. 
which so, we see now, right? Like yeah. it's that three, four day or uh, four game window, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's four yeah. now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that's an interesting one there. Safety Taiwan Francis heads out the temple wide receiver Dante Wright. Another guy that stands out in my memory is a guy that's pretty solid. He heads off the temple as well uh, to, to be with Kurt Warner's son. Linebacker Ben Amina also goes to UNLV in conference. Disgusting. But mm. uh, now incoming because we're going to try to grade this. I know it's incredibly hard. Like I said, this was so much easier when it was four people. I know right now it's like, okay, we're trying to think about the 15, 20 guys who left in the incoming, yeah. whoever 15. So, but I, I think I have a decent idea, but yeah, let's talk about the incoming guys. Yeah. Incoming cornerback, Ron Harge, the third from Oregon state. Now he, he I'm seeing him penciled in as, as a starter. So that that's a nice to get a, a, yeah. a cornerback from the power five and Oregon state had a stout defense a season, a season ago. So uh, tight end Dallin Holker comes in from BYU. This is a guy, another, another guy penciled in as a starter. I know you think air raid with, with Jay Norvell, but the, the, a new air raid where they, fa- they, they, they have the tight end in there. I feel like uh, kind of like uh, what Lincoln Riley does. So uh, defense lineman Matthew Thomas comes in from Rhode Island. The Rams had some, some big time losses. They're a solid FCS team in the uh, CAA cornerback. Dominic Morris Furman comes in and look, they hit the C- They hit the FCS ranks pretty hard. Uh, offensive lineman Drew Moss comes in from Lamar. This guy's a penciled in day one starter. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, offensive lineman Oliver Jervis from Monmouth, another starter that they have penciled in here. Uh, athlete Tyrell Grayson from Utah Tech, wide receiver uh, Dylan Goffey from SMU, running back Kobe Johnson, North Dakota State's leading rusher from a season ago, joins the team. And he's they, they went out and hired uh, North Dakota State's defensive line coach. That's so right, yeah. the connections, because uh, not only did they get Kobe Johnson, who was the, the team's leading rusher, they went to the FCS championship a year ago, if you, if you folks out there forget. Also, safety Dom Jones from North Dakota State and defensive end, Tony Pierce from North Dakota State. All those guys coming in. So it helps to hire from another really good school. Yeah, uh, yeah it really does, man. Right, right tackle Bobby Lawrence comes in from Mizzou. Offensive lineman Drew Cannon from Nevada. And defensive back Aiden Hector from Wazoo. And look, there could be more out there, all right? Because I feel like – I think I did a preview the other day where by the time I – so I had done my homework on this uh, – I did not realize that during that week, you know, because e- even like 24 seven sports or some of these recruit on three, even sometimes they update late. So like you, you find out, like I had someone DM me saying, Hey, you, you forgot about this. I researched it. And I was like, man, uh, yeah. I- by the time you put out the pod. Yeah. 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 Cause they'll have guys who come in and they're waiting on like one last thing of like paperwork or, or something where they're like with the team. Um, but they can't do like team activities. So they're like within the program. And then when that hits, it's like, it's, it's official. So yeah, it ma- makes it incredibly hard when you're yeah. trying to do a season preview stuff. It's like, well, dude, at the time, I don't think that was news. Oh, it was news. Oh, they released a tweet about it. Uh, like, <laughs> you know, like the player, not the university. So uh, it, it, it something to monitor. This is a, a revolving door. So uh, that's who they bring in. I, look, call me crazy. I think they won the portal. I know they lost the kid to, to A&M. And, and, but the other guys kind of already quit on the team during the season last year. Like they, Exactly. They lost so many guys in those first few games. And I, I think overall, net-net, I think they, they won the portal this year. I do, too. Especially, like, I know they took a shot on those FCS guys on the O-line. And it's really hard to gauge. But, like, Florida State is one that stands out. Florida State, if you watch Florida State football last year, their best defensive player, and I think you know everyone would probably say this, is a defensive end named Jared Verse that was a transfer from Albany, right? Mm-hmm. Albany was not a very good FCS team. They're in the CAA, but they're not a very good. F- they were not a very good FC- FCS team with him. So sometimes you just think FCS, this guy might, might not be the answer, but they could be really good. They could oh, be really good. Yeah. absolutely. There's a lot of reasons why someone ends up at an FCS school, but the thing with FCS. It's basically like comparing to maybe a, a mid tier, upper tier, like Mountain West team. You're just going to have less of those top guys, but they're on those teams. You just have to yeah. find them with the portal. You know, you, uh, you know, you play a team or you have a connection with a coach or the coach comes over. It's an easy way to to grab a guy out of the portal. 
Yeah, I mean, dude, Stetson Bennett was at a was at like a community college. You know, <laughs> yeah, like, I got cut, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, so there is talent out there. So I mean, obviously that's something to monitor the O line, but I, just knowing that the, if if Harge the the corner's a day one starter, Hook oh, Hulker the tight end is a day one starter. Uh, th- then you factor in the two offensive linemen and then the other potential guys uh, like Kobe Johnson, the North, all those North Dakota state guys, I think have a shot to start. I think they definitely won the portal. When you, yeah, when you- de- and I was just going to say about the offensive line with those three new guys that are, they look like they're going to start. I mean, that was one of the weak points for the Rams last year. I mean, they had to resort to like these quick three-step drops um, for uh, Clay Mullins. And I think, I mean, even if these guys are just average, it's probably going to make the offensive line and the offense better from last year. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. And, you know, that is one of the beauties of. So, uh, you know, Matt Mummy and Jay Norvell run this offense. Matt Mummy is the son of, the son of Hal Mummy, friend of the program, by the way. You know, uh, Hal Mummy and, and Mike Leach, uh, to, to the folks that don't know, created the air raid offense. And, uh, you know, we, we've had a great connection with those guys. May, may Coach Leach rest easy. But, um uh, that's the advantage of also the air raid. If you have a shitty offensive line, getting that ball out hot, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Getting that ball out as fast as you can. Clay Millen is Millen. The, I said yeah. Mullins, Millen. Yep, Millen. Son, son of uh, Hugh Millen. If you, if, if folks out there that remember uh, Tecmo Super Bowl might remember, well, I believe one of the additions. I don't think it was the original, but his dad was the New England Patriot quarterback but in a very bad, very bad era for the Patriots. <laughs> but hey, I don't care. You're in the NFL, you're in the NFL. Um, so the offense last season, 128th in scoring offense. Yeah. There was not only good. 31 teams. I mean, <laughs> that, that's, that's not good. Uh, rush offense. I kind of understand this one, 126. Now I still think you should be a little bit better than that, but when you commit it, passing the ball, the way yeah. you do, and they were down in, in majority of their games too. <laughs> Great point. Great point. Passing offense though. Uh, 105th so it's not like they were thriving by passing the ball either total offense 125th so they were the sixth worst offense by statistics a season ago year two trust the system trust the system uh so yes norvell mommy back clay millen is back uh and this is where it gets a little tricky normally when when i'm previewing these teams you see a ton of production returning or uh, you know i feel like over the years, that's gotten thinner and thinner. And this is a perfect example of that. They just have one of five back on the offensive line that was on the team a season ago, uh, starting-wise. Uh, and that's center Jacob Gardner. We talked about the transfers coming in. Maybe they mask that up, uh, and and they're, they're, maybe they're improved from a mm-hmm. year ago. You, you can't go much – you can't be much worse. So uh, they were the most – set. you know, he was the most sack – or they, that was the most sacked team in the nation. Oh, yeah. They had a few games, I think nine, eight – Seven. I mean, if he had under four, five sacks, I was like, that that was a good day for the offensive line, man. <laughs> it's I not mean, good. That, but... It's hard to win games when that that stat is. Yeah. Uh, why and look, the center the center's back though. So I mean, of, of anyone you'd want to come back, maybe the center. I mean, that's an important part of the offense, of course. So yeah, go ahead with the wide receivers. No, no, no. Yeah, you're right. Getting the getting the center back. I think if you gave me a choice, it'd either be that or what left tackle. You know, yeah, what I mean? blind side like, guy. Uh, yeah, but. Uh, you get one of five back. You bring in all those guys. Uh, may- maybe the O line's better. Uh, Tory Horton is back at wide out spot. Stud. Yes, yeah, stud. I'm this guy. I am very. And, and look, it, it, when the season rolls around, folks, if you if you didn't listen to us a season ago, we do DFS episodes. So, uh, Colorado State, you'll find them playing some of those Friday night Mountain West games or Thursday night Mountain West games. Tory Horton is a guy that we'll probably roster a lot. I know we did over the past couple seasons. Um, also justice Ross Simmons is back at the wide receiver spot. Um, I'm assuming he is going to start too. And then Goffney, the SMU transfer SMU had a, a deep stable of wideouts. So, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, escaping, escaping Dallas and going to Fort Collins, I think might be for his benefit. Um, so, and then you got Hulker at tight end. So to me, if the O line can stand up and be better, which like I said, I don't know that you can get much worse. Right. I think I think the offense should be better as far as passing the ball, running the ball. Kobe Johnson. I know they have Avery Morrow who who played some. Uh, I don't know who's going to get the start there, but I was a bit surprised that Kobe Johnson transferred from such a run heavy place like North Dakota State. Yeah, but I, I mean, look if he's if he's set to be the starter, maybe. I mean, it was advantageous for him. It looks like they also have a few other running back transfers 
um, newer guys too. So yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll see what they kind of do with some of the, the backups and see who's kind of the backup there. I'm just going to go ahead and say, despite them only returning just a small amount of players from a year ago on the offense, the offense will be better. Year two of the system. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Second year with the O, o coordinator, uh, good running back coming in. Um, I think with Horton, like I, I was talking to uh, um, his name is uh, Justin Michael. Um, he, he works with the MVR um, to cover the Rams out here. And he was saying he's a top 75 player in the draft and he's probably going to go in the draft next year. And he says there's no one in the Mountain West who can keep up with them. And if you watch the film, I mean, it checks out. He's really good. The problem, though, is just getting him the ball, right? And the, yeah. they didn't have any time. So, yeah. I mean, that, that like having a player like that. And I remember when Norvell had really had Nevada going. I think Stovall was one of those guys. Mm-hmm. They, had a slew. they had a slew of wideouts that I think, you know, uh, one or two guys that really blew up the stat sheet that I'm trying to I'm trying I'm trying to remember off the top of my head who their guy was like two or three years ago I believe he made the NFL as well but uh anyway yeah that's something to watch the defensive side of the ball uh Freddie Banks defense coordinator um 69 they actually were were not a terrible defense last year 69th now this is Norvell's specialty he played I know he's calling the offense but this is a guy that played for Buddy Ryan with the Chicago Bears back in the day tough dude Uh, man (laughs) yeah yeah, so so 69th in scoring defense, 83rd in rush defense, 19th in pass defense, 41st in total defense. For first year, you get a top good. defense. That's I, I I get it. Like uh, you know, and and well, and when you add in the fact that they were probably on the field a lot because the offense couldn't do shit. <laughs> they, I think they were. I, I think time of possession was really bad for the Rams last year, if I remember correctly, and it would check out because they did not score a lot of points, a lot of three and outs with those sacks. So the defense definitely held its own, but um, yeah, good numbers considering what you just mentioned. Yeah, and I think this is where, if you're a Colorado State Ram fan, I think this is where you're 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 most excited coming into the year is that three of four were back on the D line, led by uh, Grady Kelly. Uh, so you're bringing back, you know, everyone there. Now you are breaking in new linebackers. Um, that's okay. That to me, if you're a little scary, old- but yeah. But still, I still feel like if you told me one position on the defense where we just got to go brand new, especially the way that football has changed over the past 20 years, I feel like linebacker would probably be – I used to say defensive backs. Mm-hmm. I used to say defense, but now I feel like everyone's passing the ball so much. I almost feel like you, you might say linebacker there. Um, so breaking in new linebackers, but four or five back in the secondary. I'm excited about the secondary here because you have the former Cal uh, DB, uh, Chigozi. Anusium, who's a very good corner. And then you got that first team Mountain West safety, Jack Howe. And then we alluded to them bringing in. So four or five back, but that one starting spot we think is going to be uh, Ron Harge yeah. third from Oregon State. So this secondary could be really good for them coming into this season. What do you make of the defense? Yeah, I think uh, building off what they did last year. And I, I think for the defense, it was probably more like, let's just fill in a few gaps where we need help versus the offense. It was more of a overload but I, I i feel really confident who, with who they brought in some pac-12 talent um yeah I, th- I think they did a good job in the portal on the defensive side and i think overall it looks like a good defense and they'll hopefully continue where they picked picked off from last year yeah and, I, and another thing is tony pierce the uh, defensive end that transferred from north dakota state i'm seeing that he's speculated I'm re- i was just reading an article while we were doing this to start so that's another uh so that three of four back on the D line, but then you bring in a starter that started for the FCS team. That was the runner up to the national championship. Perhaps that is a substantial get, uh, as far as special teams goes, uh, breaking in a new kicker. They were in a few close games. Like I alluded to, I want to say the Wyoming game, the mm-hmm. Utah state game. Um, they did get blown out early on in some, but, uh, obviously a kicker always so huge. They also brought in a, uh, Oregon transfer, uh, at, at, so they brought in, Jordan Noise is a kicker for, that last year played at Utah. They also brought in Henry uh, Cattleman uh, uh, from the Oregon Ducks, who was there for four years. So interesting, little, yeah. Little, little battle in camp. Where there's also Ashton. Hey, that's Wolf. good. Good. Yeah. I mean, if you can, like, I mean, we when I played back in the day, there was kicker competitions, and they were good, man. I mean, you want a guy out there who can make k- kicks in practice, of course. When it's like, hey, you miss a few, you might not start. So. That helps build confidence as, you know, anytime you have a position battle. So, yeah, I mean, 
kickers are so vital in college football, man. We all know this. Like if you have a good kicker, it changes a lot of things. And and grabbing a couple P five guys, so they must have been highly uh, you know sought after at some point. Maybe it didn't work out. Maybe they're backups. You know, stuff like that happens. Uh, punter Patty Turner is back. This guy was a redshirt at Nevada. Uh, so this is another one of one of the many that came over a couple years ago. He's from Australia. It, I was I was looking at it, Patty. <laughs> I, I forget though. I can't remember if he does the rugby kick. I don't think he does. I think he's a traditional. But yeah, Australian guy. How does that even happen in Australia? Traditional kick out of I, Australia? Yeah. <laughs> I, I could be wrong about that. I was just trying to think about it because Stonehouse, of course, two years ago, uh, ended yeah. up playing with the Titans, and he, I mean, Stonehouse and um, at CSU, he he was, I think he had like seventy yard kicks every once in a while. Man, he was crushing the ball. Well, I mean, you get that thin air up there, man. These kickers. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, we were lucky enough, Mason Cosby, for so many years. Uh, so, oh yeah, but um, yeah, I mean, that, that's going to be something to watch as uh, as the kicking battle in camp between those transfers coming in from Utah and Oregon. They all, like I said, they also have another guy, Ashton Wolf. So three team, three team competition or three player competition there. Um, look, we're going to go game by game on the schedule to try to forecast how the Rams will do. In, uh, in 2023. But before we do that, I got to tell you folks out there that the college football experience is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Yes, Best Ball Mania is here. And Underdog Fantasy is giving away $15 million. What are we doing, folks? What are you doing? Get on over there. It's fantasy football season, all right? We just, t- we just talked about this, right? We just talked about it a second ago. Man, you know, we're, play- we're watching MLB. We're watching <laughs> series on, you know, yeah, I, you're probably grabbing other things out there. You're probably dabbling in the tennis, soccer, <laughs> USFL, God knows what, right? And uh, look, it's fantasy. That that basically means it's fantasy football time. You go pick up your magazines or download whatever you got to get, and you start forecasting that fantasy football lineup. And Underdog Pick'em is such a great way to uh, – to, to it's just a great company. that Like currently right now for MLB and college baseball, they have player prop parlays. So – Check out those. I mean, Underdog does a really great job. When college football season rolls around, I love Underdog because they do the the player props for for teams that a lot of the big companies aren't aren't aren't. Yes, uh, you know a lot of like and sickos like us, we we yes. we know all about them, man. <laughs> You'll probably be able to find Tory Horton, you know, over seventy yards uh, receiving against Colorado. In, in the Rocky Mountain Showdown. You know what I mean? You'll, you'll be able to find stuff like that uh, over at Underdog Fantasy, so check them out. All right, so head over to underdogfantasy.com. Use that promo code SGPN for 100% deposit bonus up to $100. Once again, that's underdogfantasy.com. Promo code SGPN. All right, we are back on the college football experience. Talking Colorado State Ram football with Ben Carey, the founder of CapWise, which is you need to check out CapWise. By the way, what, I mean, t- tell the people about CapWise, Ben. Yeah, for sure. So uh, we do simulation models um, for a variety of different sports. Uh, college football is actually one we don't model for. Uh, we might do it for the first time this year. We just do a lot of traditional handicapping, and it makes it so hard with the portal, like we were talking about, trying to project like week one, week two, just these new players coming in. So yeah. a lot of traditional handicapping. Um, from the college football perspective, but we stream on Twitch primarily. We'll be streaming uh, all college football season, so definitely check us out. I, I definitely love to cap uh, Mountain West. I'll do a little FCS, Big Sky, Pac-12, uh, being out here in Colorado. Uh, but yeah, it, it, it's a it's a good time on the Twitch stream, and uh, yeah, check us out. Check check them out. They did for college basketball. They did this uh, like uh, it was like oh the it, god it was, yeah yes it was like one of the greatest things I've ever seen. All right, like as far as like uh, deep dive Appreciate on like that. every team in the tournament, and uh, it was just it was just incredible. So if you're a college basketball fan, like CSU's got a good college basketball program. Check out check out their stuff because uh, Capwise doing great things. Um, all right, well look, getting into Colorado State's uh, schedule here, you know, uh, getting getting some Power Five talk. You know, that's another thing I guess we should touch on before we dive yeah. into. This. You get all this conference realignment going on right now. You know, there's talk that San Diego State might be in the Pac-12 in like a week, right? Uh, and and SMU, I saw Klavikov was down there at SMU. Brett Yormark, uh, Big 12 might grab SMU. 
you know, there's been talk about UConn joining the Big 12. <laughs> UConn. Which just makes, I mean, for guys like us who've been watching these conferences for years, it, it doesn't seem like it makes any sense just from like the geography out of it right like we're talking yeah, uconn well, like, and, well, and the fact uconn football has been terrible until last right. year when mora uh, you know came in there and took him to a bowl but you know that's what's interesting is you know somehow boise gets lost in the luster there they've been an inc- they haven't had a losing season since like the clinton administration <laughs> and and uh but i did see colorado state get mentioned some because of the money they threw in there at to their athletic department because colorado is a growing state um, so, you know, what, what, what's your take on potentially like five, 10 years down the road? Could Colorado state, you think maybe be a PAC 12 or, or, or big 12 team? Yeah. It's so hard to predict what's going to happen with the PAC 12, but I actually think they can because the facilities out there are, are pretty good. I mean, they're not up to the level of like Colorado, the university of Colorado and Boulder, but canvas stadium is nice. I've seen five or six games out there. It's a very nice stadium. I think it's only five. Uh, maybe six, seven years old. Yeah, time flies. I, it's it's newer. Yeah, yeah. It's, one of the it, stadiums. it's on campus now, right? Yeah, it's, it's on campus, campus, which is huge because Hughes used to be out in the middle of nowhere. I mean, you would have to drive, and there were a lot of people who got mad when they moved the stadium. But I think it was for the better, just so the yeah. students can have a, you know, they can I literally agree. walk to the games. Um, but yeah, I, I think the next few years for the athletic program, obviously, it starts with football. Uh, it, it can definitely lead them down a path where they enter. Uh, a bigger conference, but they got to start winning games. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would so. really help. And maybe Norvell could be the guy to lead them there. That's what makes this so critical. So, all right, uh, week one, uh, you know, for this Colorado State, well, first off, shout out to Cam Kerr, our graphics guy. If you're watching, yeah, that looks good, man. Yeah, youtube.com uh, slash the college experience. You see the win total in the right hand corner sitting there at four and a half. <sighs> Hey, it's it's lower than last year, but he's in year two. I first I, I was a bit without really diving into the schedule. I'm like, dude, they, they they're gonna be better than that, right? I, I mean, think it's an easier schedule than last season too. So I'm perplexed by that. So okay, four too. and a half. Let's let's get into it because week one, yeah, and you can make a case it's easier because they get uh, Washington State. Not in Pullman. They get them in uh, Canvas Stadium there in Fort Collins. Man, Washington State brings back Cam Ward. Uh, I think Jake Dickert's an underrated coach. But I still feel like this game, I'm not going to say this isn't winnable. You go back and look at, at at Washington State, they almost lost to Idaho in the big sky a year ago. Now, Idaho was a good FCS team. But, um, I mean, I would favor Wazoo, but not by much. I mean, what, 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 what would you do here? So, I actually, this is the first bet. I placed for college football and I took Colorado 16 and a half taking plus 16 and a half. And there's a few reasons why Um, I think it's going to be close. Like you said, it's in Fort Collins. It's, it's altitude. Crazy things can happen. But I think the kicker here is Washington state has Wisconsin on deck the next week. Uh, Colorado state has Colorado, but they get a week off. So I think they're going to be ultra focused on Washington State, they saw them last year, and I think Norvell, just how he kind of coached last season, I think he was really being strategic about it. I know it's so crazy to think about, like you're thinking about next season, but these coaches are they're they're masterminds. They think about every little thing. Yeah. Washington State's probably going to be putting in some installs and and packages the week before the Colorado State game for Wisconsin. It's something that college programs have done since i don't know since 20 40 years like i don't want to say it's a it's a look ahead spot but it's a a sneaky spot where washington state better bring it because i think colorado state's going to keep it close i love the 16 uh plus 16 but i do think washington state wins this one dude i i love the 16 too uh jump on all over that folks if you can get that right now yeah uh, uh, i i think this moves around 14 by um Kick off, you know, yeah. kick off in a few months, but yeah, sixteen looks good. Uh, I think, I, I think Wazoo. I'll take Wazoo, but I honestly believe this is like a one score game. I yeah. think it's a one score game. So they've already sold out tickets uh, out here in uh, out there in Fort Collins, man. I I read something doing some research. It's sold out. People are pumped, man. I mean, they're they're ready. And and like, look, the whole thing with Prime. I know that's Colorado, but it's it's kind of like built this. Hey, we're like the little brothers. 
And in a weird way, I think, I mean, this is a take, but I, I think the elevation of Colorado is is kind of building this, hey, we're Colorado State and like we want to play good ball too. So yeah. don't forget about us. Well, that's what's so interesting because, okay, so if we give Wazoo the win here and Colorado State's 0-1, they get that bye week to focus on Colorado. Now, here's why it's so tricky. Ugh. As we know, Colorado's playing Nebraska for the home co- – that is Dion's first home game in Boulder, God willing. I know he's got the uh, – yeah. Surgery, but I'm saying, uh, imagine if Colorado beats Nebraska, they're gonna storm the field probably. Even yep. it's go, you know, it's just the rivalry game, and then the very next week you get the Rocky Mountain Showdown, and Colorado's gonna be. I, I can see them smelling themselves a little bit. You know, I'm a Buff fan. I hope it doesn't happen, but at the same time, I'm terrified of where they catch them. I wish Colorado would have opened the season with CSU as opposed to, uh, you know, catching them after the Nebraska. Yeah. So, I totally agree, man. And they have TCU even before that. So, yeah. Car- I mean, Colorado State's going to have two games of film on yeah. on the Buffs. I mean, you want to talk about a look ahead spread? I think Colorado is going to be the the favorite. But man, I don't think it's over three points. To be honest, I know that sounds crazy, but yeah, the only thing that I would say that I f- makes me feel a little comfortable is I think Colorado is going to be really strong in the secondary. Which yeah, running the air raid, you know, I I think you know Dion might even be able to just say, "Hey, man up," you know yeah. what I mean? Like, hey, man, we're we're, yeah. we're gonna yeah. pressure and look. I, I don't I don't want to say it will be three points, but I think in the range of like three to seven. I, I don't think it's over over seven to be honest, man. I know it sounds crazy. Maybe Carter State loses big against Washington State. I don't think they will, but and it kind of comes down to what happens with Nebraska and Colorado. But yeah, that's gonna be a fun game, man. I, I'm gonna try to get tickets to that one. Dude, I'm so glad it's on the schedule. I'm so oh, yeah. glad. Yeah, last year, I mean, yeah. and it's in Folsom this year, which is important because it was typically uh, at the Broncos Stadium, um, you know, the last like six or seven years. I know they had two years over the last 20 where it was in Folsom, which, oh my God, they packed that place like sardines. Have you been to a, a Colorado Car to Stay game in Folsom? I've not been to a, the, the, the Rocky Mountain Showdown in Folsom. I've been to Folsom, but not. Yeah, not yeah. it was. Uh, I, I don't like the I I, I kind of like when it was at the stadium, the Broncos stadium, but it is what it is. Yeah, but uh, there's something to be said to me, and I haven't been to the one at the Broncos stadium, so I, once again, I, I can't speak too intelligently on this. But I I always lobby for I love college football games on campus. Now yeah, it, it is it is fun. I mean, seeing Ralphie uh, at Folsom under the lights it, it it does hit different. <laughs> I would like to see him in Fort Collins too. Like I, I think it's one of these yeah. things. I get it. Like, you know, why should a power five play on the road? You're going to lose to a group of five. If you play on the road. Yeah, but we want to see that. I know the, the SEC and big 10 hate going a bit. Michigan would never play at Bowling Green, but for some reason, Washington state will play it at Fort Collins. You yep. know what I mean? So and yeah, it's, it's good for college football and Norvell. He'll play anywhere. Uh, I think Dion's the type. He's like, Hey, like we'll, we'll play in Fort Collins. Like, let's yeah. go, you know, let's so. go. Let's go. Uh, so curious. <laughs> I got, I got CU winning. I, I can't uh, look. I yeah, up, I, up <laughs> I'm with you, man. I think it's going to be a close game, uh, but I think Colorado State's going to lose, and they're going to start off the season own too. I think so too. But now they hit that back to back away, which is always a tricky thing, by the way. It is. Back-to-back it is. Uh, I know. I, I haven't done all the number crunching from last season, but previous years, I know uh, the percentage is almost jaw dropping on on the amount of teams that will lose on the road to teams that have a worse record than them in the second game. But so, the good news though, it's, it's a short travel to Boulder from Fort Collins. So it's not your true, like, Hey, we're flying cross country, um, which makes me kind of like Colorado state uh, against middle Tennessee state, which last year they were down 34 to Oh, early in the third quarter at home, man. <laughs> so, you know, a lot of those guys, they, they remember that. Yeah, give me CSU on an upset. I've been to Johnny Red Floyd Stadium, and that place doesn't get very lit. Uh, so I, I think CSU is capable of winning this. I know Middle Tennessee and Stockstill is a underrated coach. I mean, they yeah. beat Miami Hurricanes in, in uh, Coral Gables last year. But um, I think CSU could win this one. I'm going to take them to win this one. How about yourself? Uh, I, I'm, I'm with you, man. I think they get the first win. Uh, we'll be interesting to see what the spread is in that game. Because, yeah, Middle Tennessee, they're a good team. Like I'm, yeah. I'm not overlooking them, but... You know, you hope after playing a Washington State, a Colorado, you know, you, you build on some things, you, you pick apart like what worked, what didn't. 
come on the road, steal one. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, playing two power five schools and that, that, uh, you know, maybe a little bit of a little bit easier competition. And then, uh, like I said, I feel like Middle Tennessee sounds crazy. I believe they're more dangerous on the road than they are at home because I've been to that stadium and it's like kind of a, <laughs> it's kind of like a sleepy environment. And not, not a, not a rocket. It's not yeah. a, it's not Tennessee. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right? exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, after that, they host, uh, they used to call the school Dixie State, but that offended people. Uh, Utah Tech is now the, the name of the Trailblazers. Um, that this is an FCS school. I, I, they haven't even been playing FCS for that long. This is yeah, gonna, they yeah, have not. This is going to be, this should be Colorado State easily. I would, I would, yeah, say. I think they win by 14, 21. Um, I, I was doing a little research on Utah Tech. I mean, they did get a few transfers, but it's one of those things where I think Colorado State learning from last season that like these FCS schools can come in and kick your ass. Hopefully yeah. that gets them focused. Uh, it's Ag Day too. Uh, it, they do like an orange out, um, so they're gonna have a good crowd. I mean, the the student section loves that orange out, the retro uniforms that they wear. So there's gonna be a good crowd for that. Also, you said there's a transfer, I believe, from Utah Tech. I I believe I did say that. I did I did say that. So you little got bit a little bit of intel, right? Yeah, a little bit of intel that goes a long yeah. way. Um, all right, so two and two through their first four. Um. This this to me is is one that I circled as the, one of the more <laughs> critical games on the season. I went back and forth. Like if we recorded this like three hours ago versus now, I, I think I might have had a different answer. Like I want to hear your thoughts on this one because it's it's going to be a tough one, man. At Maverick Stadium, Saturday, October seventh, uh, in Logan, Utah, at Utah State. Now Utah State, you know they battled so many injuries, and besides injuries. Yeah, Blake uh, Anderson, man, Blake tough Anderson's family situation. You know, we, we want to wish our best to to him and his family. Um, but uh, uh, it's hard. I I just thought, man, I understand why Utah State struggles. I'm the a the oh, yeah. and when you add that that right, you know, right as I think that was in the summer. So you is your mind really going to be on football when you when you have to deal with the scenarios involving your family that are very serious? So, um, I think they're going to be better this year, but. I do think this is a winnable game. I think this is a winnable game. Now, it does. The fans can show up in Logan at Maverick Stadium. So, oh yeah, it, it can uh, be a real. It, it, it's one of those places where if they get to like max capacity, it is above average. Like I think a home field advantage, especially with the elevation. Now, Colorado State plays at high elevation too, so neutralizes a little bit. But man, I, I'm gonna I'm go with a loss, CSU. man. I'm taking CSU. I see. Again, if you would have asked me three hours ago, I went back and forth on this one. So, well, I, but you're with me. It's 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 close. It's close. I'll say this, folks: if if you want CSU in a bowl, I think this is a gigantic game right here. I agree, I, man. Yeah, That's I mean, when you circle and you look back and you're like, "Oh man, yeah, gotta yeah. have this one. Gotta have this if you want to if you want to build and, and get to a bowl." Uh, so you got him at, at two and three. I got him at three and two. But now Boise State comes to town. Andy Avalos somehow salvaged the season after a terrible start a season ago. They went with the youth movement with Taylor Green and Ashton Genty. And those guys were freshmen and they're back for their sophomore years. And that's why I cannot take Colorado State here. But I would be, I would I, like, I do think it's homecoming. So, it's homecoming. you know, Sometimes magic's in the air, and and they're st they're still sophomores. It's not like they're oh they're back for another year. They're fifth year, sixth year, yeah. sixth year seniors. Um, this is one where like to me they're still sophomores. So if they struggle, maybe you could pull off the upset. I'm taking Boise though. What are you doing here? So I couldn't come on here and just be chalk the whole time, right? That that'd be no fun. <laughs> I like I like Carter State, man. And look, here's the thing. It Boise State, I, I think they actually are going to have a really good season. And I listened to you guys cover them and everything you guys said was pretty on point. I agreed with almost all of it. Right. I mean, they dominate at home. They played well on the road. They have a good quarterback. They found a good quarterback. But the thing with this one, it, it's it's homecoming, like you mentioned, for Car Colorado State. It's also the seventh straight game for Boise State without a buy. They get a buy after that week. Um in the altitude, I just feel like it's one of those spots, man, that they could catch them. Now, what will the spread be? Maybe double digits, depending on like what happens in in this first five to seven weeks before that. But look, the Utah State game, this game, like it could flip flop. I could be wrong, and I think we we might arrive at the same record, you and I. 
but you, I, I, I just have a feeling, man, this is one I'm, I'm going to circle and see how things play out. That could be a tough game for Boise State. You might be right because looking back, so Taylor Green is a sensational talent. We've saw, yes. we saw, you know, but he is young. He's young at throwing the ball. People are already comparing him to Josh Allen, which I think is a little unfair. But um, yeah. uh, you look at the road game. So he didn't come in until after after the San Diego State game last year. So he played three road games a year ago at Air Force, where they won by five. Uh, at Nevada, who was a terrible team a year ago, they won by 38. And at Wyoming by three. Wyoming gets lit. You know, Air Force can be tough, but I don't know. I, I think you're building a decent case here because this. Uh, I think Fort Collins will be packed for this one, uh, being it that it's homecoming. homecoming. Oh, and, absolutely. And don't let Boise State upset UCF or Washington early in the year because they might be ranked. Um, I, I'm it's hard to Boise. say. I'm taking Boise, but I, 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 I look, I, I, I can see an upset happening. So I'll give you that. And I, I, and I like the fact that you didn't go chalk on everything, but now, <laughs> now they head to UNLV. Yeah. See, this is one of the dumbest things in my opinion. And I don't know if you've heard my approach on this, like UNLV. Okay. Raider stadium. You know, I'm not a big dome guy, but Ra- Raider stadium should be for the NFL. Mm-hmm. UNLV will never. All right. I, I repeat will never be able to pack that stadium. No. So it's going to be, it's like you're watching the Miami Hurricanes. The Miami Hurricanes, ever since they moved their their stadium to like uh, the Hard Rock. Yeah, you fall asleep watching those games, man. It it feels like no one even cares. It's like half the stadium's full. And then, I mean, those fans are really interesting. (laughs) When they're winning, it's great. Like, they're loud, they're crazy. And then when they they lose, it's like halftime. Half of the stadium is already gone and it was already half full to begin with so now you have a quarter left <laughs> <laughs> and, and and with UNLV it's even worse because Miami at least has like national championship history UNLV will never be able to I thought one of the biggest mistakes I get it for recruiting yeah uh, you know but but maybe you just play a game or two there because to, to me before Sam Boyd was a was a small stadium I know it was older but if you just renovate uh to me you it, more realistically if you start winning you could probably pack that thing for you to pack the Raiders stadium, man, you're going to need like Dion to go there. You know what I mean? Like there's not many people. I, I think like even very successful NFL coaches could take the UNLV job. And oh, I don't oh, think they can pack it. Absolutely. And, and I think like 10, 20 years ago, I think it was more of an allure for these recruits to be like, oh, yeah, no, we play at a NFL stadium, you know, one yeah. time out of the year or like the whole year. I don't think like now they care about that. I don't think recruits really care about playing a Raiders stadium as much. I think they're more focused on like, Okay, how do I get the most brand awareness? Uh, how can I get to the league? That stuff is is down the pole a little bit, like the, the yeah. totem pole. Like they don't they don't really care about that as much. And the other thing too, even if they do have fans, it's going to be people who are tourists and they're just like, oh, you know, uh, I'll catch a game. They're not going to have a crazy atmosphere. Yeah. So they're not going to be UNLE fans, which is why Colorado State comes in to Vegas in Barry Odom's first year and wins at Allegiant. What are you doing here? I got to win too. Um, you know, it, it could be a, t- UNLV is a weird team for me. Um, who knows what they're going to do, but on paper, I think CSU wins this one. Yeah. So we both have them at four and three. Win yeah. Total, win total is four and a half folks. Um, We're almost there. <laughs> now, now we got a little rivalry game because Air comes to town, but this one, it, you know, this one drives me crazy too, because you know, I we, we we dropped our Air Force preview. Go listen to that, folks. If you if you haven't, really uh, good. By the way, I listened to that guy, Rick. He, Bums. he knows a shit, yeah. man. <laughs> thank you, thank you, man. And uh, shout out to Rick Baum. But th- you know, they are going out of the gun some this year because the NCAA's rules. You know, Army's going full out of the gun. I think Air Force. So weird, uh, man. Georgia Tech already left. Um, uh, you know, now these the military academies. It's weird to see, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I wonder from a handicapping point of view changes everything to me it, cha- like, it changes so much man well especially for army air force i don't think they're going 100 percent out of the gun but i still wonder what are the ramifications of this you know yeah, what I mean? you, you could get caught like they like let's say they're going out of the gun maybe just five ten percent of the time but then you get a game where maybe they see something where they're like we're just going to do a read option down your throat and all of a sudden now it's like back to running the ball as much as they did previously it's yeah you could get caught with your pants down on some of this so you really have to like watch these games game by game especially with a team like air force 
Yeah, that's why this game, I think, is one of the harder ones to project, too. Now, I would favor Air Force because Troy Calhoun, I think, is an unbelievably good coach. But So good, man. Turned down I, CU, I think, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, pretty I wild. Stuff. He runs runs things up there in Colorado Springs, and at the time, it's like, why, why really leave? I mean, yeah, and and he swept Colorado when they played recently on, on you know, yeah, in Folsom too. Jeez, yeah. or you yeah. know, two three years ago, yeah, yeah, in overtime, got it done. Uh, I'm taking Air Force, but I mean, this is one that I still think is winnable because of these changes. If if I see early on in the season that Air Force is struggling more than normal because of these rules. Uh, that are ridiculous by the NCAA, might I add. Uh, I, I'm going to take Air Force, but I don't feel very comfortable with that assessment. You? No, I, I don't either. I put Air Force too, uh, winning this one. Um, Colorado State lost both of uh, the rivalry games, Air Force and then Wyoming coming up. We'll talk about. Um, fun fact, uh, <laughs> well, depending on if you're a CSU fan or not, but uh, you got to go back to 2015, the, la- the last time Colorado State uh, beat both Air Force and Wyoming 2015 Ooh. and 2016 um, or going back to 2016 uh, the Rams are 0-6 against the Falcons and then 1-6 uh, and against the Cowboys who we'll talk about so look Air Force it's a tough team because of the triple option like you legit would need like three four weeks to prepare for the triple option some teams in the Mountain West I know this for a fact they uh they work on the triple option defense in the summer because it's, it's so different from anything you see now uh, with the spread looks. It, it's literally like a different. I mean, some guys on defense, they've never even seen a triple option before. Right. Yeah. So that makes it tough. Um, it is in Colorado or Colorado state, but it's not a, the biggest drive, you know, yeah. for uh, yeah. Yeah, air force. So they'll be used to. So yeah, it's a, it's always a tough one, man, but I got to go with the, the Falcons on this one. Yeah, so that puts us at what four and four, I four believe. and four, yeah. And then uh, we do have uh, Friday night CBS Sports Network on, on Friday, November third. Quick turnaround. Yes, short week uh, going to War <laughs> Memorial. Yeah, the the border war. They've been playing this since the eighteen hundred, late eighteen hundred. I think like Dude, this is the boot. It's the boot, right? They play for the boot, yeah. man, and yeah. all these these games, man, are always so close. Like. I know it sounds square to say, but it's like if the spread seven one way or another, you just take the dog, man. Like, yeah. I know that's the squarest thing to say, but uh, these I like, like Bolt knows uh, Craig Bull. He knows uh, he knows this program pretty well. Um, I want to hear what you have for this one. Well, uh, I'll say this. I'm a big fan of Craig Bull. Like he got his team rated a year ago and everyone Everyone, I, I was listening to friends of mine who have, who do a college football podcast that cover it just as well as we do, or just as heavy as we do, and uh, they were like, "Oh, Wyoming's going to be one of the worst teams," and I was like, "No, nah, man, I trust I trust his culture. I really do trust his culture. Yeah, um, he can he can slow the game down, and I I it, it's 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 it reminds me of Tom Osborne in a way. I know he oh yeah, Osborne, but like sometimes when you don't have the most talented teams, I know Osborne had talented teams a lot of the times, but uh particular years when they didn't and uh you know i felt like he could maximize the talent that he had and his in-game coaching to me long drives he'll go yes they'll, they'll go on like they were not very talented last year because they lost no. all those players uh they, they'll, they'll do like a, a, a first off always great punting always great punting i feel like with the craig bowl team and then uh they manage the clock, I think, better than he manages the clock better than most coaches out there. Oh, he's got to um, be in the top ten percentile of like good play callers and and good time of possession guys, good game managers. I mean, he 100%. kills it in that category. I know they got rated again. They got rated again. <laughs> they this just year. get rated, dude. They, I feel, and you know what's funny is the basketball got rated too, man. Yes, yes. They're just like. Poor, poor guy. I mean, Laramie's like not the best place to live, but I mean, they party and like they have a good sports program uh, type of culture. But man, I'm I don't actually, know why. I'm actually heading there for the App State game this year. But ooh, App State in Laramie. But uh, they party, man. Those guys are crazy, man. <laughs> I've never been, so I'm looking forward. Yeah, to it. It, it's fun. I'm taking Wyoming, but this is a field goal game to me. This is a I, field goal I, game to me. So yeah, I'm 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 gonna have to go Wyoming, man. Yeah, I think yeah. both these games are going to be so close. And if CSU wins one or two, I wouldn't be shocked. But man, 
I, I don't know. It's something about like after getting off to that middle of the season, like hot start after, you know, the bigger teams, I feel like they have a little bit of a lull. So, well, well, here's where my eyes light up is starting on Saturday, November 11th. They have two home games and then they, they have a, uh, a trip to the Island in, in mm-hmm. third, uh, November 25th, the final game of the season. But San Diego state is, it's interesting. You have this program on the verge of a power five. I actually think by the time most will be listening to this, they'll be announced in the power five. Now it won't be this year on the field, mm-hmm. but I think and they'll be announced as a PAC 12 or big 12 member. And their football program, it's funny. I, I, I'm, I live in Los Angeles, and I, I, uh, I have friends down in San Diego. I, I used to host a, a comedy show down in San Diego every week, and they wanted Hoke fired last year. And to me, and I know they still had a winning season, but I think they just built a brand-new stadium. And I just wonder about this year with San Diego State. Like, you know, if you're going into a brand-new conference, and you're not if you're six, and, you know, if you're just mediocre, I don't think that's going to cut it for them. They might. He, there's a chance, I think, that he could be fired for this game. Now, uh, if that happens, then I love CSU's chances. But regardless, I kind of like their chances because this is going to be cold as shit. And I've, if you <laughs> San Diego's the best weather in the world. Right. So I'm taking upset here in Fort Collins. I'm taking Colorado State to upset San Diego State. What are you doing here? Oh man, this, this is a tough one. Um, look, there, there's so many moving parts with this one, right? Like we know that San Diego state's probably going to be the better team, but yeah. man, I don't know. They've, they've done well in the past, uh, coming into Fort Collins, but I know it's just all different players, different personnel. I have Carter state losing. Okay. That's fair. Yeah. That's it's going to be close though, but uh, I got that as a win. That that would cash my over. By the way, uh, we still need we still need one. Don't worry, here. I'm getting there. <laughs> um, but the Nevada Wolfpack, Ken Wilson, the rivalry. You know they they've made it known they do not like each other. Uh, Norvell and Wilson. Um, I got them beating Nevada. I think Nevada's going to be pretty bad this year. I still, yeah, I, think they, I don't know that they, they're going to be bad after that much. So it could I be got a fun game though. Yeah, fun I game. Mean, I don't even. I don't even think those two. I think didn't they didn't shake hands after the the game, or yeah. if they did, it was very. Yeah, it's like one of those ones like you shake it. Yeah. Fuck, fuck you. Very yeah, much. the one one guy like just pulls out, the other one squeezes, like you know, <laughs> trying to like put dominance on each other with the handshake. Yeah. Um. So you got you got him cashing the over then on this. I I do. Yeah, and and I think uh. You know what? This could be a game where Colorado State maybe wins by like two touchdowns, depending on how the seasons go. But at the same time, it could be another just, hey, you know, there's still the bad blood and Nevada gets up for it. But I mean, how many guys are really left from Norvell these days? Right. I, I didn't actually look, but it's it's not as much if, if it was 10 yeah. years ago talking about it. Right. Like a lot of guys are just gone. He took half of them, too. Yeah. Yeah. So. I mean, it, it is a lot, uh, but I think I think they're going to take him down and then. So for you to make a bowl, they would have to beat Hawaii on the island on November 25th. Timmy Chang, uh, shout out to Timmy Chang, and played uh, quarterback under June Jones, yeah. our friend, and uh, he used to be a part of the staff with Norvell. So they're familiar with one another. Good point. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I think the I mean I think uh, Colorado State's the better team. So I I think they have the better roster. Now I was impressed with Timmy Chang though as the season went along, knowing how how shitty that team. Like, yeah, the that, from the Vanderbilt game where I think they lost by what, like four touchdowns, dude. Well, Todd Graham left them in in a total in a total. Oh you know, man, that was a disaster. <sighs> the athletic director, who's no longer there, then the hiring search was a, a, a disaster. So players just left. I oh mean, yeah, it, it, it was a really ugly. Scenario. And they're trying to recruit like last second to Hawaii, yeah. which yeah, it's Hawaii, but when everyone already had their spot for the next season like they were in a, r- a really compromised position i was impressed with the strides he made considering i knew how bad i thought they were going to be the worst team in college football mm-hmm. and yeah and if I, you if you were betting on them second half of the season you, you had to be making some good money yeah they were, the co- they were yeah covering the machine man so but i am taking colorado state to win on the island yeah, same. <laughs> I, still, I still know how talented they are yeah but uh 
so I got about seven and five, seven and five. That that would be a great jump. It wouldn't be as good as his year one to year two Nevada where he went to eight. But I think seven and five. I'm on the over. I feel pretty good about the over. How do you feel like in general? I know you took the over, but I feel I feel like this is a pretty safe bet. Yeah, man. I actually was going through just quickly like some of my first thoughts on a lot of these win totals and four and a half seems really good. Like I would not be shocked if this jumps up to like five and a half and, and ends up being an over at like plus 110. I, yeah. I really don't because I think once people listen to this <laughs> and just start, start to figure out like, you know, if they were at five and a half last season, which we alluded to when we started the pod, why are they going back to four and a half? I guess the only thing is if you're not buying Norvell as a head coach, but he's in his second year. Um, you know, Colorado State had th- three head coaches in five years, right? Like they uh, had Bobo and then they even last year, they had some of Bobo's players still playing, right? A lot of them yeah. uh, either didn't play much or they ended up leaving. Um, but now you basically have Norvell's guys, uh, the schedule, it's, you know, it's not easy Washington state, Colorado, but easier than last season. I mean, they played Washington state and Michigan to open. Yeah. yeah. I don't really get this line, man. It doesn't make, I don't sense. know. Another thing that I, like Adazio is like a ground and pound coach. So last year, and I was wrong. I was wrong. I thought the over would hit and, but I think I underestimated the culture shift from yeah. a ground and pound to a, Hey, we're going to go air raid and pass the hell out of the ball. And that was a, that was a, a, a real struggle for them, but that's why I believe year two, they'll mm-hmm. be more, they know their identity more of what, what we're trying to do. So I I'm all over the over here and I feel pretty good about it. I know we do our locks episode in August where we talk about, which overs and unders we like this, the might, most. this might be gone by then yeah <laughs> true that's very yeah true. this one might be gone by then and i will say if you look at last season like the first half of the season i think was one of the worst first halves Colorado state has ever had but they did turn it around a little bit i mean they were in close games i know new mexico was like end of the year new mexico definitely did not meet my expectations but they look good offensively against new mexico and new mexico had a good defense it was their offense that was just the bottom of the, I think they were worse than Colorado State, I believe, yeah. offensively. Yeah. So at least to have some success um, with Millen, I mean, to end the season, build some momentum. You got some new guys coming in on the offensive line. Man, four and a half. Like, I know it's it's betting. Guys can get hurt, but man, this this one seems pretty good, man. Hammer it now, folks. Hammer yeah. it now. Look, before we get out of here, we have uh, Michael Barker coming on the show. He is uh, known on Twitter as College Football Campus Tour. Yes, at CFB Campus Tour. You need to check out his page because this guy, uh, if you like college football, he is everything that is great about college football. So uh, I have a quick little interview I want to play where I got to sit down with Michael and talk about his trips to Fort Collins. All right, so with no further ado, here we go. The college football experience, Colorado State Rams 2023 season preview is the guy that goes to every single college football stadium yes maybe even high school i don't even know uh give it up for michael barker aka college football campus tour you need to be following him on twitter because it is the coolest twitter page out there in the universe all right uh what's up michael and and, uh, talk to me about uh colorado fort collins and your experiences there yeah well i appreciate the introduction yeah the canvas stadium is built in 2017 it's one of the newest g5 stadiums out there uh, a lot of people refer to it as the blueprint for new stadiums. It's just just done incredibly well, uh, 41,000 seats, so it's a good size for a G5 program. And it replaced Hughes Stadium, which was off campus, and they played there from 1968 to 2016. Personal story, uh, my dad played uh, linebacker at University of Pacific in Stockton, and he told me the best game he ever had was against Colorado State at Hughes Stadium. He had 19 tackles and an interception. And so I went there in 2017, and my plan was to go check out Hughes Stadium. Well, I went to campus first, and they were building Canvas. And I got so wrapped up in the construction and the just everything about seeing a new stadium being built that I forgot to go to Hughes Stadium. And... Um, They tore it down. It doesn't exist anymore. And so I can't go into the place where my dad played his greatest game. Uh So um, you could say, how did I forget? I was 
uh, making stops on the way to the Stanley Hotel, which was the shining, uh, the haunted hotel based on the shining. And I hit Boulder and I hit Fort Collins and I was trying to go check in and it just escaped my mind. So um, Canvas Stadium was so impressive. It made me forget about visiting Hughes Stadium. Wow. Wow, man. I mean, that's that's uh, that's brutal. I mean, it's awesome that, that it's, it's so impressive, but it's brutal. The, I feel for you over here. So wait. Did you get a chance to actually see a CSU Rams game at all? Yeah. So the next year, uh, we always love the week zero games. So they played uh, Hawaii in a week zero game. It was uh, so August in uh, Fort Collins. It was a beautiful night. It's not cold at all. It was uh, a shootout and Hawaii led by Cole McDonald won 43 to 34. Uh, I'm trying to get back there right now. I, I have week five circled on my schedule. I think Northern Colorado plays a day game at two and then they play at seven. They're only separated by 42 miles. That would be a great double header, but I've been there, but not since 2018. Oh man, I got to get out there. I've never been, but I love the state of Colorado. It's so beautiful and their football stadiums seem to be all awesome. So I got to get out the Fort Collins and so do you folks, uh, folks, make sure you give uh, Michael a follow on Twitter at CFB campus tour, because like I mentioned, he goes to all these games and he po- he'll post like the photo of the game. It's honestly, uh, honestly, one of the coolest follows. I, I firmly believe that. Like, uh, so Michael, thank you for coming on and sharing your experiences. And everyone, get out there and give him a follow. Absolutely. Thanks again, Colby. All right, Michael Barker. Look, it's a newer stadium. Normally, when he comes on, he's rattling off all this great history. Well, it's one <laughs> of the newer stadiums, so it, was, it didn't have as much fuel to the fire but michael it does unbelievable work man he this guy goes to like seven games a week it's fascinating dude he was talking about going to my alma mater i, I was like that's dope he's gonna catch the the nightcap with Colorado yeah. state that's great yeah, man. dude he goes everywhere he goes to colorado school of mines he'll go he'll, he'll go all across the united states like he'll put he's showing me photos of his high schools in hawaii <laughs> right on the beach you know yeah. what I mean? So, uh, to hit him up, man, when he's uh, out here, because I'm sure he'll go to a game out in Folsom too. So you should, man. You should, yeah. and uh, folks, you should also be following Ben Carey and Capwise. Uh, ben Carey on Twitter at Ben underscore Carey underscore, and then Capwise at uh, on Twitter at uh, at Capwise W I Z E. Ben, I appreciate you coming on and talking, that was fun, man. Yeah, man, we're going to have to have you back soon to talk about more, more, maybe a little Colorado Buffalo 2.0 episode or something. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's always a lot to talk about with uh, what's going on in Boulder with Coach Prime, so I'm, I'm down for that. There we go, man. All right, folks. Well, uh, look, that does it for us. Make sure you give us a follow. Once again, we are on, well, all of our podcasts uh, for the college experience. That is the college football experience. Uh that is the FCS college football experience, which is dropping this week. Uh, and that is also the college baseball experience and the college basketball experience. We come together as one on YouTube, youtube.com slash the college experience. Subscribe over there, but also give us a podcast or, or give us a follow a podcast. Give us a follow <laughs> that makes sense podcast. to me. <laughs> <laughs> give us a follow wherever podcasts can be found. Spotify, whatever. Uh, iTunes, we're all there. Please give us a five star review if you can. And uh, we are part of the Sports Gambling Podcast Network, so check out the Sports Gambling Podcast and all the great work that they do. Get that SGPN app. It's free to download in the App Store and Google Play Store. And we are college football junkies. So pl- if you love college football just like us, come hop in the Discord, sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash Discord. We talk college football year-round, folks. Any sport, really. Yeah, honestly, like you could be talking about a game with dominoes in an alley in Mexico City, and I'm pretty sure we got a guy in the Discord saying, hey, uh, <laughs> We can make some money here. Uh, so hop on over there. And uh, yeah, I cannot wait to continue to talk more and more. The yes. road to 133 college football. You, you guys are animals, man. Oh, you guys, I, I, I found you guys last year doing the team by team. And I remember I reached out. I was like, yo, you guys are on top of it. Like, it's not just, you know, oh, you know, here's this, that. Like, you guys are going through thoroughly for every team. It's an impressive work, man. Thank you. I appreciate it, Ben, man. And uh, look, I appreciate it. It's just like just like when you release that thing for uh, for, for March Madness cap wise, people go check them out. They are awesome. They do great work. So, Ben, I appreciate, appreciate it, man. you. man. And, uh, and look, we're, get get to the window. Get these tickets uh, yeah, over. On I, I'm telling you, man, this it's going to get moving, man. So <laughs> get you listen to this. Don't don't think twice, because that's when you miss out. Right. You're like, yeah, I'll do it next week. And then you're like, oh, there, there it goes. Yeah, I hate when I get 
when I get some 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 like I think last year my number one lock was Kansas over uh, two and a half wins. Right? Great pick, Jesus. Uh, <laughs> thank you, thank you. And I had it the year before where we we had to sweat it out against Texas, but we hit it. I'm a big light pole guy, and uh, uh, but someone got the number. Uh, uh, the season hadn't gone final yet. We didn't know that they would win. You know, open up. Oh season. yeah, yeah. No, so they're and, sweating out. <laughs> yeah, and, and they got a different number than me. Like, oh, you gave away a phony number. I'm like, no. The difference is, is I did the episode, uh, and I bet this thing in early June. You know what I mean? So you got it at a different number after that. So. Get in early, folks. Get in I'm early. I'm telling you, this one's gonna. This one is moving. It, it, it's yeah. moving. I agree. I agree, folks. Hop on the over now. This is the college football experience, Colorado State Ram style. You better start thinking about yours. And we out of here. Yeah.